It is our unique gifts and talents that pull us out of this mindset of tomorrow, out of survival mode and into being here now, into all of the parts of our being, mind, body and spirit that heal us, that harmonise us, that create balance again for our whole system. You know that one thing in your life that you feel a spark of joy every time you think about it. And, yeah, it might be overshadowed sometimes with a trigger of guilt or shame or fear or sadness that you're actually not in alignment with that thing. But that thing, all the same, still creates a feeling that nothing else brings the same way. It is a special talent or gift that you've been given. And you know that when you are immersed in that special thing, that time stops, that you feel what flow means, that you recognise that feeling of relaxation and regeneration within your being, just being immersed in that thing. I believe, and I'm sure this is true, <laughs> that life flows when we choose to pursue what we have been given within our realm of gifts and talents. When we choose to pursue our talents, when we stop putting them on the side as something that we'll do one day, on a rainy day, that we push to the side and say, well, that's not a priority right now. When we tell ourselves that these things, that, yeah, we feel a spark of joy, but is that really important? I need to survive. That doesn't bring food on the table. That doesn't fill up the bank account. That thing doesn't help me with my uh, career or my uh, security. That thing is a luxury. It's just an optional. It's something that I've always had, but doesn't mean that I have to pursue it. I think this is sad. I think this is sad that we have kind of been programmed to think this way about these sacred gifts and talents that we've been gifted in our lives. It's sad that we don't attune to them, that we are not even shown how to attune to them. We learn that the nervous system is a system that is designed to flow energy in and out of our bodies without blocks so that we are a continuing healthy organism, this flow of energy in and out. But many of us, if not most of us at this time, have blocked energy systems. And, you know, it doesn't help that from a young age we are thrown into a mindset of, planning for tomorrow and so we we stay in survival mode we learn to shallow breathe we learn to shallow think we learn to overthink and we learn to underfeel. we close our hearts and we close attunement to ourselves we even lose touch of when we're hungry or thirsty or tired we just are not in touch with ourselves anymore our talents take us to unique places. They take us to special places within our perception that we wouldn't get from any other way, from just following or fitting into society's survival strategies. We are encouraged to only focus on survival and to lay by the wayside the sacred. And often, unfortunately, it appears that most of our gifts and talents lay in this sacred part of life, in the play part of life, the part of life that is designed to delight and uh, re-energize us and inspire us. It's designed to slow us down, to become more present, 
to become more appreciative, to fill our being up with gratitude and appreciation and presence, which naturally is the language of the heart. We become powerful beings when we realise the power lies in this moment, but we don't get to this moment when we live in our heads and when we live in tomorrow. So it is our unique gifts and talents that pull us out of this mindset of tomorrow, out of survival mode, and into being here now, into all of the parts of our being, mind, body, and spirit that heal us, that harmonize us, that create balance again for our whole system. Our talents bring us lightness. They bring us ease and flow, abundance and prosperity. They bring us synchronicity. Have you noticed when you finally pick up that brush to paint? or dance around in a circle or sing your favourite song instead of getting annoyed in traffic or um, intentionally create some space to tell some jokes or get out an old musical instrument even if you can't play or take some time to play with your children or your pets. It is these moments that we start to move into flow, into the zone. We lose track of time and space. This is how we achieve flow and grace. You know, we talk about wanting to be surrendered in this life, to let go of our tight grip on control because control was the way we used to feel safe. We used all of our programming to feel safe, that it kept us unsurrendered. I don't think that's a word, but it, it kept us from letting go. It is our gifts and talents that take us into flow without effort. It's often not even a, an intentional let go or surrender that takes place when we step into that thing that brings us joy. It just happens, it just happens. Imagine a world where we're encouraged to pursue our gifts and talents, no matter what it takes. Imagine that. No, we're, we're encouraged and nurtured from very young to grow that part of us that lights us up and delights us and takes us into presence. And, of course, we're going to be good at it and we're going to master it. You know, they say it takes about 10,000 hours of whatever that thing is to be a master at it. Well, it would be easy if it was something that was a gift and talent of ours and we were encouraged to do it our whole lives. Imagine the joy that it would bring others if we were honouring ourselves enough to follow this pathway. Only you can choose to courageously say yes to pursuing a life lived through the gifts that you were given. And it takes courage because it goes against the norm that our culture currently portrays as appropriate and acceptable. We need to remember that our culture isn't necessarily healthy in its emphasis on survival mode and that from what I'm witnessing, we, we, we fall ill and, and in disease when we are not in alignment with our heart. It's not always the easy way. And it usually takes us on that hero's journey, which is not meant to be easy. The hero's journey is something that you set out to do with courage, ready to face the threshold into an unfamiliar zone, ready to meet your allies and enemies and ready to be tested. 
the courage to to atone for what you may have mistakenly done in the past, the courage to face the programming that the shadows that's not working for you, the courage to do something different than what everyone else is doing, and the courage to collect the tools that you need, the magic elixir to walk back into your ordinary world having changed within you profoundly. To me, you may as well pursue your gifts on this hero's journey because we find the joy that we're seeking, the alignment and the delight in life through this path. So if you're currently feeling a niggling at your soul, at your spirit, there's something not right. And maybe you've felt this way for a long time and you've always known there's this gift and talent you have and you're good at it and it's easy for you. But it's just not in your mind at this stage acceptable for your life, for whatever reasons that you've created or you've been exposed to. Well, I want to encourage you take the first step. The beauty of pursuing your gifts and talents is that it's a lot easier than pushing against the grain that is something that is not in alignment with you. Trying to follow a cultural value system or goal set that was never yours in the first place. You're always going to be pushing uphill when it's against your true pathway. It's always going to feel like survival mode. So take the first step. I would encourage you to do that.